What happens when Donald leaves his nephews with his bajillionaire uncle, Scrooge McDuck? Read along to find out. You will know it's time to turn the page when you hear this sound. Let's begin now. The day had just begun, but Donald Duck's houseboat was already bustling with activity. Huey and Louie were helping their uncle get ready for a job interview. Donald wanted to wear his sailor suit, but Louie had a better idea. He handed Donald a fancy business suit. You gotta dress for the job you want, not the job you have, which is no job. Huey made Donald something to eat. And a big day calls for a big breakfast. Donald was all ready to go. There was just one problem. The babysitter wasn't coming. <laughs> Donald had to think quickly. He put Huey, Dewey, and Louie in the car and entered an address into the navigation system. Huey looked over Donald's shoulder. He couldn't believe it. McDuck Manor? As in Scrooge McDuck? Dewey was shocked. The bajillionaire? Louie looked at Donald warily. You're finally gonna sell us. Donald put the car in gear. <laughs> Donald and his nephews pulled into the driveway of McDuck Manor. The gate was closed. Donald called Mrs. Beakley, Scrooge's housekeeper, on the intercom. This is me, over there. I've been to the lot of him before. He shows up. Scrooge McDuck's limo was right behind Donald's car. Scrooge jumped out of the car. Hey, jettison that jalopy from my driveway this instant, you deadbeat. Scrooge was not happy to see his nephew, Donald Duck. Donald frowned. Uncle Scrooge. Huey couldn't believe his ears. Uncle Scrooge! They were related to Scrooge McDuck, the famous billionaire and explorer. Huey, Dewey, and Louie could barely contain their excitement. <laughs> Scrooge ordered Donald to move his car, but Donald refused. Oh, here we go. Scrooge shook his head. I am the richest duck in the world. Never! Donald introduced Scrooge to his nephews and then told him about his job interview. This is me, son. You would watch the movies. Can you do that without using gamma? Scrooge scoffed. Of course I can. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Donald hopped back into his car and quickly sped away. Scrooge wasn't exactly sure what he'd just agreed to do. Wait, what now? Huey, Dewey, and Louie were thrilled to be at McDuck Manor with their great Uncle Scrooge McDuck. As soon as they were inside, they blasted Scrooge with questions. Dewey jumped up on the table. How old are you? Huey looked at Scrooge. How come you never visit? Louie crossed his arms. You used to be a big deal. Whatever happened to you? Scrooge had had enough. Big Clay! <laughs> Mrs. Beakley led the boys to an empty room and gave them a bag of marbles to play with. The triplets wanted to find something more fun to do. Dewey used the heavy bag of marbles like a hammer to break off the doorknob. Come on, guys! Let's go touch some expensive stuff. Suddenly, a lasso wrapped itself around Dewey. <laughs> Seconds later, Huey and Louie were captured too. <laughs> a mysterious figure questioned the three boys. Who sent you, my beagle, blonde gold? Answer me. Louie bravely spoke up. Uncle Scrooge! <laughs> Just then, the lights came on. They were being held captive by a girl. She cut the ropes off the boys. Oh my gosh, the nephews! The girl introduced herself as Webby Vanderquack, Mrs. Beakley's granddaughter. 
She had been researching Scrooge McDuck's family and wanted to know more about the nephews. The triplets told her a little bit about themselves. Excited, Webby looked them over. Wait, are we friends now? Louie and his brothers nodded. So, friend, what do you do for fun around here? Webby kicked open the room vent <coughs> and climbed in. Big crawl! Louie looked at his brothers. At least it's not the marble room. Together, they followed Webby into the vents. <coughs> Meanwhile, Scrooge McDuck was in his study. He hadn't liked what Louie had said to him, but he knew the boy was right. Scrooge had been a big deal when he was younger. It was time to be a big deal again. He had just read an interesting weather report about snow falling on the Drake Barrier Reef for the first time in 50 years. That gave Scrooge an idea. He put on his old diving suit and explained his realization to Mrs. Beakley. That weather report aligns perfectly with a Papia prophecy. A shift in currents may present a pathway to Atlantis, lost city under the sea. Mrs. Beakley did not think Scrooge should go on an adventure. She thought that Scrooge should spend more time with his family. She wondered why he hadn't seen his family in over ten years. Scrooge scowled. Because family is nothing but trouble! At that moment, the nephews and Webby were passing over Scrooge's study in the vents. Dewey heard Scrooge's answer. It hurt his feelings. But he kept following Webby and his brothers. Webby led the nephews to another part of the mansion. Welcome to the Wing of Secrets. Everyone climbed out of the vent. The large, shadowy room was full of huge golden idols, mystical artifacts, and even dinosaur skeletons. It was like a museum of adventure. Webby showed Huey a magical gong that was guarded by a statue of a dragon. The gong of Pishu. Hit it three times to unleash unspeakable evil. Louie started putting green tags on some of the treasures. Huey gave his brother a strange look. Uh, what are you doing? Calling dibs on stuff. Scrooge is like super old. Webby stopped Louie before he could tag a golden glove. Careful, Medusa gauntlet. One touch can turn organic matter to stone. <laughs> Louie hesitated. Okay, we'll call this one a maybe. <laughs> The nephews noticed a heroic painting of Donald Duck. They didn't believe it or any of the other artifacts were real. Webby wanted to prove the boys wrong. She opened a treasure chest. Louis shook his head. Probably bought it at an auction. A large cloth rose up from the chest. Webby gasped. This ghost? Dewey rolled his eyes. You mean this Halloween decoration? Dewey pulled on the cloth, and a ghost popped out. Webby screamed. Ah! It's Captain Pegrook, the Scarlet of the River Snakes! Dewey grabbed a magical sword. It's real! It's really, really real! He hurled the sword at the ghost. Ah! It went right through the phantom and bounced off the gong. Webby gasped. Just then, a headless man horse came to life. It stumped and hit the gong again. Webby was horrified. One more and something terrible could happen! Suddenly, the door flew open. It was Scrooge McDuck. Why aren't you in your rooms? The nephews grabbed Scrooge. They pulled him behind a giant coin to hide from the ghost who jumped on the back of the headless man-horse. Scrooge wasn't afraid. He walked right up to the unruly spirit. Hey, beastie! What's it gonna take to shuffle you off to the afterlife? The ghost cackled. <laughs> there was only one thing he wanted. The head of Scrooge McDuck. Scrooge jumped into action. He dodged as the ghost hurled the magical sword at him. The sword missed Scrooge 
cutting off the head of a statue of Scrooge McDuck. Scrooge caught the stone head as it fell. With a smirk, he threw it to the ghost. There's your head. The ghost shrieked in anger at his mistake and disappeared in a wisp. He should have been more specific. Everyone congratulated Scrooge, but the billionaire was upset that the nephews hadn't stayed where they were supposed to. Louie tried to explain. We came down to your secret museum to look for you because we love you. Secret museum? Scrooge turned on the lights. This is the garage. Unbelievable. I invite you into my home. And look at the mess it's got me. Dewey frowned. I guess family is nothing but trouble. Right, Scrooge? That made Scrooge even more upset. Everybody out! Angrily, Scrooge hit the gong with his cane. <laughs> Webby stepped back as the stone dragon came to life. Pishu, the gold hunting dragon. Louie was excited. Gold hunting? Sounds great! Huey pointed at Scrooge. Not when you're Duckbrook's single largest owner of gold! As the dragon burst through the roof, Scrooge grabbed onto its tail. Ah! My money man! Webby wanted to catch the dragon. Dewey looked at his brothers. We're in. But how are we gonna get up there? Just then, Launchpad McQuack, Scrooge's limo driver, appeared in the doorway. He was a pilot, and he offered to help. Together, Launchpad and the four friends ran to Scrooge's plane. In the sky, the dragon took Scrooge on a wild ride through the city. It'll take more than some fancy flyer to shake old Scrooge, a cash cannibal. The dragon flew back and forth, knocking Scrooge against the buildings. As the dragon closed in on the McDuck fortune, it finally managed to throw Scrooge off its back. The billionaire fell toward the ground. Luckily, Scrooge was pulled into the plane by Webby and Dewey. Webby knew it would take something special to stop the dragon. It's mystical, so we need a mystical device, like an oblivion mirror, or a Medusa gauntlet, or a... Like this? Louie held up his hand. He was wearing the Medusa gauntlet. Webby glared at him. Well, I was gonna give it back. Launchpad steered the plane behind the dragon, just as it began its dive toward the goal. Scrooge took the Medusa gauntlet from Louie and strapped it on his hand. Then, Scrooge tied a rope around his waist and jumped into the sky. He dangled from the plane, reaching and stretching until... <laughs> Scrooge grabbed the dragon by its tail. He held on tight as the gauntlet sent waves of energy through the monster. The dragon turned back into stone and crashed to the ground. Scrooge went flying, but landed safely in the pile of gold coins in his money bin. Launchpad landed the plane. Scrooge marched up to the young ducks. In the short time I've known you, you've wrecked my home, unleashed several ancient evils, and almost got me killed twice. Suddenly, Scrooge broke into a smile. <laughs> That was incredible! You kids are nothing but trouble! Curse me, kilts, have I missed trouble? I suppose I'll have to keep an eye on you to teach you how to get into trouble properly. Scrooge pulled out his phone and called Mrs. Beakley. Clear my schedule! I'm taking the wee ones on a field trip. Scrooge hung up the phone and smiled at the little ducks. Now, let's go find the lost city of Atlantis!